Hello, and welcome to another episode of AT Extra, the series that's dedicated to helping you achieve your goals. Episodes of AAT Extra will provide you with study support sessions, as well as information on how being a member of AAT can help to shape your career in finance. Today, I'm your host, my name is Debs, and I'm one of AAT's marketing managers. This episode is all about the Professional Synoptic Assessment, also called PDSY, and how you can best prepare yourself for the written elements of this assessment. Please be aware that if you can't watch everything right now, you can still watch the video on our Facebook page later on. Just go to facebook.com forward slash your AAT forward slash videos. I'm happy to say that today we're joined by award-winning AAT training provider, Avado Learning, who will shortly be presenting a great guide on PDSY extended writing tasks. And after that, I'm going to be joined by John from our benefits and services team to tell you more about Matt's status and what you need to become a Matt. Before we get into PDSY, here are a few updates from AAT. For those of you preparing to sit PDSY, your window to sit the assessment is between the 18th and 24th of November. Results will be available on the 9th of January 2020. Results will be available throughout the release day. There are no set times for results to be released, so keep an eye on your MyAAT account for yours. The AAT branch network are busy putting on great events up and down the country with over 40 events in the calendar for November. Branch events are a great place to learn new skills, keep your knowledge up to date and network with AAT professionals. They're free for AAT members and students, so find your local branch at aat.org.uk forward slash branches. Some of the branch events in November are setting up your business with the Bristol branch on the 16th of November. Managing mental health in the workplace with the East Kent branch on the 21st of November. How to prepare for Brexit with the Peterborough branch on the 23rd of November. And an event on professional ethics, CPD and your career with the Middlesbrough branch on the 23rd of November as well. More details on all of these events can be found on our website at aat.org.uk forward slash events. There are many more events in the calendar, so do take a look. You never know, you could meet your future employer. With Christmas on the horizon, make sure you check out AAT Rewards for exclusive discounts on everything from shopping, cinema tickets, and holidays. You can access AAT Rewards in the My Membership section of your My AAT dashboard. Well, that's all for our updates for this episode. It's now time to join my colleague Tom, who's with Avado Learning, for their study support session on PDSY Extended Writing Tasks. I'll be back later with my colleague John to talk to you about Matt's status. Thanks, Debs. Hi everyone and welcome to today's session. Thanks a lot for tuning in. My name's Tom. I work in the benefits and services team here at AAT uh, where my remit is to put on a benefits package for both students and members. Now as you'll see, I'm delighted to be joined by Rob from Avado Learning. Thanks very much for joining us, Rob. Um, pleasure. And uh, just before we make a start on uh, today's session, if you'd just like to tell us a little bit about yourself and also a bit about Avado Learning as well. Certainly. Hi, my name's Rob White. I'm from Avado Learning. We're an award-winning AAT tuition provider. Uh, we offer online courses across levels two, three and four, um, both bookkeeping and full qualification. Fantastic. Well, uh, whenever you're ready to kick off the session, we'll make a start. OK, let's go. I am now want to go through a short presentation for about half an hour or so, just looking at some of the elements of PDSY that have uh, caused problems for students. I want to talk about the, the context um, of the exam, where it fits in, where it, it uh, affects the other units. Um, one particular tool that uh, students should be making use of is the examiner's report. And then some ideas that I have about how you can improve performance, and we'll put those into an example just so you can see some of these things in practice. So firstly, the context. The CBA is a three hour CBA, 100 marks available. You have six tasks to complete. Uh, importantly, there are two different types of tasks. You've got the uh, multiple choice calculation type question, and you've got four extended writing tasks or four tasks that include extended writing. And those are what we're talking about this, this afternoon. 
the, con the content comes from the four compulsory units, that being the two management and accounting units, budgeting and decision and control, the financial statements of limited companies, and the accounting systems and control. Um, principally the accounting systems and control, but elements of those first three units will be involved as well. So that's the context we're working in. One document that is available to students that should be read and should be examined closely is the examiner's report. This is available on the AAT website. And I've reproduced one of the uh, elements here which identifies the problem. Um, looking at each of the six individual tasks, you can see quite clearly that task two and task six fall short. They perform relatively poorly. Very few students exceed the requirements. Um, so whilst we're doing very well on, for example, uh, quest task one and task five, better performance is needed in those second, uh, the second and sixth task. And some further um, illustration or some further timing seems to throw up that students are spending more time than necessary on these tasks. Although that may be because they've got more time available because they're finding some of the other tasks a bit easier. But certainly extended writing is causing a problem. So what can we do about it? How can we improve this without taking a, a GCSE English? Some thoughts that occur to me. First of all, make sure you understand what it is that you're being required to do. Uh, we'll talk about verbs in just a second. There is information supplied. Make sure you use it. Don't just simply remember what it says. Make sure you understand what the examiner is trying to tell you and find why the information is there. There are very few, if any, red herrings. All the information supplied will be useful in some way. But don't expect it to be laid on a plate. You're going to have to dig around to make sense of it. So have you made full use of that pre-supplied data? The data supplied before you start is reproduced within the exam itself. Make sure you're familiar with it. When you're forming your answers, make sure that you're using sentences and paragraphs, unless you've been specifically instructed otherwise. Too often students put answers in in the form of bullet lists or bullet points or just catchphrases and that will get you no credit at all. When you've written your answer, check it. Writing is much more difficult than most people assume it to be. Make sure you've read through your answer. You've written an answer, now read it and make sure it makes sense. It is very easy to miss a word or to uh, change uh, a negative to a positive and so on. So have you explained the situation that you're dealing with? Have you given a full description of the problem? Looking at the particular feature you're looking at, does it impact on other areas that you can bring in to make a more complete answer? Don't forget to check your spelling, grammar. Look out for common misspellings. Uh, a particular bet noir of mine is, as it says on the slide there, an awful lot of people these days, instead of writing should have, write should of, which is not English as far as I'm aware. So look out for that sort of problem because it will generally make your answers better. Now I mentioned on the previous slide verbs, and these are some things that you should be aware of. Um, the question is formulated by the examiner in a very particular way to get you to give him or her very particular bits of information. Some of the verbs to look out for, and you may not see all of these, but what you'll notice looking at this list, and it's a fairly exhaustive list, there are a number of different verbs and there are a number of different responses that are required. For example, if the task given to you asks you to state something, then there is no need for an explanation or analysis. You just simply make a bold statement. 
Conversely, if you're asked to describe something, then that bold statement won't do. You will need to give a detailed explanation. Similarly, analyze means takes that description, but break it down further into individual parts. Explain means give reasons for, evaluate, look at the merits of something. As you can see, these are all different requirements that it places on you, but it's important that you know the words so you know what it is you're answering. <coughs> Getting a little bit more complicated. Discuss. Discuss is a very simple word to say, but it's one of the most challenging ones to answer because you need to look at all angles and come at a problem from every, every area. Uh, review, fairly straightforward, but compare. Compare is, you're going to need at least two situations because you're making a comparison one to the other. Built on to compare is recommend. If you're asked to recommend a situation or a course of action, then by default you must be doing a comparison, but you're then adding a decision onto the end of it. And so on. So they, those are all different words that can be used in the task, and it is important that you know what the response to those tasks is by understanding what the verbs mean. So what I'd like to do now is to run through uh, an example. This is an old AAT example as it happens. Um, <clears throat> but it gives you there's a lot of word on, on the words on the screen for which I apologize. Um, but hopefully you'll see the sentiment. What we've got here is um, a situation. We've got um, some information given to us on the left-hand side of the screen there, um, different variances. Now, what you'll notice is whoever's done this work uh, is a bit of a poor worker. They've missed information out. For example, and it's the point we're going to look at, the direct material, um, apologies for using uh, acronyms, but space prevented uh, all the words on there. So. The very first line on the information is direct material price variance, £20,000. But it doesn't tell us whether it's adverse or favourable. Other information on there, we give given some additional information and as you know on an AAT question you always have additional information. <coughs> what are we told? We're told that the raw material supplier suggested improved quality because improved quality would mean less wastage. We're told that a budget to prioritise hit staff morale because it didn't go through and there was a breakdown. And they, these are other bits of information. And then the task we've got, using that information, prepare a report to the managing director covering an analysis of the direct material price variance by. And then we're given clearly four things to do. We've got to identify the sign of the variance, We've got to explain what the variance means. We've got to provide one possible reason for the variance. And we've got to link that variance to other variances. Because very few things in this life sit in isolation. And in this particular case, variance analysis is very much one of those things that links. So what I'd like to do is to go through four possible answers to that question and four possible examiner's comments on those answers so you can see the difference that can be achieved just by changing your words slightly. Okay so answer A. We're looking at the direct material price variance and the suggested answer is I suggest that the variance is favourable because the better quality material should result in less wastage and therefore less material needs to be purchased. That's the thoughts of um, this particular student. Is it right or not? No. That's a poor answer. That, that answer would not get any marks in the exam. The student has fallen into the trap of not reading the question properly. That answer doesn't relate to the price variance. It relates to the usage variance. Yes, it is true to say that usage should improve because of the better quality. But almost inevitably, better quality materials are going to result in a higher price. Therefore, you would expect an adverse price variance. We're spending more money than we anticipate. So it's wrong factually, 
There are also no attempt to explain what's going on or to link it to any of the other variances. So there is nothing in there that would attract a mark. So, B. Another short answer. I suggest that the variance is adverse because a better quality of material has been brought in. So, similarly a short answer, but better than the first one. It's correct. It is correct to say that it's going to be an adverse variance, and there is an explanation for that, the, the better quality material being brought in. However, there's been no attempt to link it through to any other variances or to examine what the effect of that better quality would be. And all the way through, what the examiner is looking for you to do is to find that bit of hidden information. You know, 2 plus 2 equals 4, and everyone knows that, but can we go deeper than that? And that's what you're being asked to do here. Knowing that the better quality materials coming in should make you think of other areas where that might impact. We're not being asked to do it in this question, but for example, the loss of morale, you would expect to hit possibly material usage. If the workers couldn't be bothered, they would just simply uh, not take as much care. So always be looking for those links. Okay, answer C. Now answer C is a little bit longer. Um, but what is what is this student saying? This student is saying that they're suggesting that the variance is adverse because a better quality material was purchased and they've added on the fact that better quality material usually costs more uh, than standard or lower quality. They've explained that an adverse variance means, in this case, the price paid is more. That's important. Adverse and favourable are terms that we use quite quite easily, um, but they do require a context. Better quality material likely to result in less wastage, and therefore they would be expecting a favourable usage variance. You'll notice from the data that we're not given adverse or favourable for the usage variance. This student has linked that in, and they've also made a suggestion as to how that would be, and logically they're correct. So this is a correct answer. Um, this student is going to get the marks for this part of the question because they've hit all the points. And importantly, they've hit all four points that the examiner asked for. They haven't given a very short answer and not answered everything. And that's one of the problems that people have. When they're taking the exam, they give a short answer, which doesn't give the examiner the opportunity of giving all the points. Uh, D, once again, quite a long answer, um, but they're putting a bit of fluffy words in here. It's not been determined that this is an adverse or favourable variance. Well, you can state that, but we did know that because we can see on the example, on the uh, data, that's not there. However, as a higher grade material is purchased and used, it's likely that the variance is adverse, which makes sense, and we know from the previous one that's the right answer. Higher price, pay, higher price was paid for materials compared to the standard, which is what you'd expect for the higher quality. So once again, not a bad answer. It's correct. There's nothing wrong with it as such. Um, what he hasn't done here, or she, I should say, um, only omission is they haven't made an attempt to link this through to other variances. So they've gone most of the way and it's logically well put together, but there is a, a little bit better they could have done. And that's the key, I think. The key is make sure your answer makes sense. Look through it as you wish to. <coughs> assume that the examiner needs explanation. If you assume that the examiner is uh, an accounting professor and you can just gloss over the points, then you will lose possible points. Make sure that you're explaining what it is you're doing because you're not trying to impress them. You're trying to make them understand that you know what you're talking about. 
and practice. Make sure you use all the resources that are available to you. At Avado, we have online resources for our students. Your training providers will no doubt have something similar. Make full use of them. Make full use of the AAT practice resources. Get used to thinking. Practice writing. It's something a lot of us don't do very much these days. So it's, it's something to get uh, familiar with. And other than that, I hope it goes well for you. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks very much for joining us today, Rob. I hope you all found the session really useful. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. And likewise, I hope everyone found it uh, beneficial. If you do need any extra revision support, please do check out our Facebook page where we have a PDSY scenario for you, which was posted on Tuesday. And there will also be a quiz which will be posted tomorrow morning, so do check that out. Um, before we go, I would just like to say as well, good luck to everyone sitting their assessments. I hope you really get the results that you're looking for. Yes, definitely. Good luck to all. And um, we're now just going to go back to Debs and John. Uh, they're going to be talking about full membership, so stay tuned. And we we'll look forward to passing over to Debs. Welcome back. How much do you know about AAT professional membership? Whether you're focused on bookkeeping or accounting, considering becoming chartered, or you want to run your own practice, AAT Professional Membership provides a flexibility, support resources, and advice to help you get to where you want to be. So what is professional membership? Well, after you've finished your professional diploma in accounting, you're eligible to apply for full AAT membership, or MAT status. This gives you your designatory letters MAAT, the letters that help you stand out from the crowd to employers and show the world that you have the skills and expertise to get ahead. And as our research shows, gives you the opportunity to earn more than those without a professional designation. You also get access to a wide range of online resources designed to support you wherever you want your career to go. Things like Excel e-learning modules that help you maintain your skills, something that even our most senior mats find useful day to day free webinars covering all of the latest industry hot topics, as well as the soft skills that will set you apart in any finance team. And career support and advice, such as CV writing tips and interview guidance that could clinch you that dream role. On top of all of this, you'll be joining a nationwide community of professionals through the AAT branch network, who deliver CPD, networking and career support right on your doorstep. Check out our professional membership video to see what we mean. So how do you apply for your MAT status? In order to gain your full membership at AAT, there are a couple of criteria that you'll need to meet. Firstly, we'll want to know what experience you have, which can demonstrate that you've used the knowledge and skills that you learned during your studies. Technical stuff like cost accounting or audit, as well as communication, team working and collaboration. Now, this might sound a little daunting, but we have a lot of helpful guidance and support to help you fill this section of the application and it's likely that you'll be surprised just how much you've achieved. Next, you'll need to give us a professional reference, somebody who can vouch for your experience that we can get in touch with. This should be someone senior who has knowledge of your current or previous roles and work with you for at least six months. 
And lastly, you'll need to complete our MAP declaration, letting us know that you're ready for full membership and pay a one-off application fee. And you won't need to pay your new membership fee until the next time you come to renew. Watch our video on how to start your application through your member dashboard. Hi, my name is Nadia. I work in the customer support operations team. We look after all your applications and I particularly specialise in professional membership. The full membership or MAT application takes just four steps to complete. Step one, submitting your work experience. Your work experience, called competencies, needs to cover at least a continuous six month period. This needs to include clear and detailed examples of any duties you've had that help you meet the competency. You'll also be asked to provide five personal competencies. These provide details of the soft skills you've picked up in any past role, such as communication and time management. In this section, you'll need to provide a few examples to demonstrate how you've met them. Lastly, we want to know about your technical competency. This is your chance to show off your accountancy or finance knowledge. You'll need to include examples of your experience with a specific area in accountancy or finance, such as payroll, credit control, or financial accounting. You can use either sentences or bullet points, but do include as much detail as you can. Your technical competency is the only one that we will need to be verified by a senior manager or colleague that knows of your work directly. When you enter their details to your application, we'll send them an automated email where they can review what you've written and confirm that it's all correct. We'll let you know when this has been completed. Step two, providing your professional reference. Here, you'll need to nominate someone as your professional reference. This should be someone who has worked with you for at least six months and can recommend you for membership. This can also be the same as the person who verified your technical competency. The only caveat is they can't be related to you. When you enter their contact details online, we'll send them an automated email as well. One top tip for this section is to double check the email address that you give us for your reference. If it's not correct, this can delay your application, so it's best to take the time to double check. Step three, complete your MAT declaration. Here, you'll be asked a couple of questions so that we can make sure you qualify for our fit and proper assessment. Don't worry, if you do answer yes to any of these questions, we'll get in touch with you by email as soon as we can to let you know your next steps. Step four, pay your outstanding fees. If you've already completed your qualification, you'll only be asked to pay a one-off admin fee when you complete your application. Or if you apply while you're still studying, you'll receive a discount on this fee. Visit our website at aat.org.uk forward slash fees for more information. As always, if you need any more information or support to complete your application, our team are more than happy to lend a hand. Give us a call or an email and one of our customer support team will be able to help you through the process. So now you know the how, let's cover the when. If you're studying your professional diploma in accounting, you can start logging your work experience now so that when you pass the qualification, you can apply for your MAT status straight away. This means that as you take your first newly qualified steps into the industry, you can start using your designatory letters as soon as possible and showcase the hard work and dedication you've already shown to get there. If you find that you haven't got enough work experience to apply for your MAT status just yet, maybe think about taking up AET bookkeeping membership or AATQB in the meantime. Gaining your AATQB designatory letters can help you stand out to employers and help you gain what you need to get your MAT status. And if you're taking your professional diploma and accounting exams, that means you're already eligible to apply. Go to our website at aat.org.uk and take a look at all of your professional member options or log into your My AAT dashboard and start your application today.